Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So let me introduce myself briefly. Oh, uh, so thank you for watching my presentation today. Thank you, Eva London, to invite my presentation. My name is Yeo Hyun An. I'm an assistant professor of graphic design at the University of Wisconsin Medicine of the United States. Today, I'd like to talk about typographic selfie plus code. What is selfie? Selfie is a self-portrait digital photography that one has taken of oneself, typically one taken with a smartphone web camera and shared by social media. Over 1 million selfies are now taken every day. Selfies are not always as spontaneous as people seem. According to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, a selfie is a form of art. It can be a communication tool purposely. Typographic selfie plus code is an extension of a selfie plus code, which is a collection of generative selfies taken to raise awareness of Asian female faculty being isolated and marginal in a predominantly white, white institution of the United States. I was inspired by a research paper, Women of Color Faculty at the University of Michigan, Recruitment, Retention, and Campus Climate, written by Amy Cook. Studies show that women faculty of color may be the most marginalized faculty on U.S. campuses. Challenging areas are isolation, high attrition, student evaluations, peer perception, additional service responsibilities. The visual style was inspired by Impressionism, which is a 19th century art movement that captured a moment like a selfie. This is a woman with a parasol written by created by Cloud Monet and expressionism, expressing inner troubles and feelings of anxiety rather than technical skills or beauty. That was a traditional goal of art. The computational process expands the concepts of traditional self-portraits to generative selfies conveying specific thoughts or feelings. I used the processing and mirror library developed by Daniel Sipman. It transforms each pixel from real-time video source to each rectangle on the level of brightness by using an internal web camera. Each shape is transformed to each line that you can see from here to go. So each shape is transformed to each line to draw the moment being brushed off. Several variables, functions, and color palettes are added to express the visual theme. My internal web camera captured my self-portrait photography and eliminated the facial expression by using computation. Then transformed my facial expression to express being brushed off. The series of the selfies were taken in my office space in a predominantly white institution to represent a space for Asian female faculty on US campuses. The process was similar to professional photos taken in photo studio. It was taken by different angles and levels of the light repeatedly and sequentially. Selfie plus code. It is a series of generative selfies to capture psychological moments to express that individual identities are devalued and deconstructed by a homogeneous white institution of the United States. These are sketches from Selfie plus code version three with the subtitle, Melancholy. This is a beginning of the typographic selfie plus code research. I applied typography into 
cell P plus code. According to L, oh, this is typography cell P plus code. According to Ellen Lofton, typography is what language looks like. Typography is the art of arranging letters and text in a way that make the copy legible, clear, and visually appealing to the reader. Typography involves font style, appearance, and structure, which aims to elicit certain emotions and convey specific messages. Based on the type choices, different motion, emotions and moods can be visually expressed through the generative service. It is a visual research with diverse typefaces to embed visual expression into generative service. Helvetica. Helvetica is a modern, intelligent, and stylish typeface designed by Max Midinger in 1970, 1957. It is among the most widely used sans-serif typefaces. Times New Roman. Times New Roman is an intellectual, confident, academic, and professional typeface designed by Stanley Morrison in 1931. It was commissioned by the British newspaper, The Times. Also, it is one of the most popular and influential typefaces in history and on desktop computers. Putra. Putra is a modern, practical, comfortable, and capable sans serif typeface designed by Paul Renner in 1927. Didot. Didot is a sophisticated, polished, and professional typeface developed in the period 1784 to 1811 by Didot family. The fashion magazine Vogue had been using Didot as the typeface for their cover title since 1955. Baskerville. Baskerville is a traditional, credible, and neutral typeface designed by John Baskerville in 1750s. It is still popular in publication design. Zeffino. Zeffino is a calligraphic typeface designed for linotype by the typeface designer Hermann Zeff in 1998. It is based on the alphabet Zeff, originally painted in 1944 as a font. It, I'm gonna just, yeah, it makes the extensive use of ligatures and character variation. Asmelia Hari. Asmelia Hari is an elegant calligraphy script typeface designed by Arif Dewey at Kotec Kuning Studio in 2019. It is more like an abstract painting. Nanum Myeongjo. Nanum Myeongjo regular is a Korean typeface. It is straightforward and clear. It is designed by Fontlix and published by Neighbor. Nanum Kodi. Nanum Kodi regular is another Korean typeface. It is a rounded typeface. It is clean, sensitive, and modern. This is designed by Sandol Communication in South Korea. Hangul. Hangul is designed by Taegyung Lee, who is here, or who has a bilingual experience English. His typeface used Korean vowels and consonants to construct the English typeface Hangul that you can see from A to Z. If you can understand Korean, it looks like a Korean, but it is an English typeface. Here, I embedded uh, the English typeface Hangul into my generative selfies to represent my identity. I'm originally from South Korea.
This is another version with the type as Hangul. Conclusion. Typographic selfie plus code is visual research to show how to use typeface in generative selfies to convey feelings and thoughts as extended typographic practices and application. The research demonstrates traditional typographic principles and practices, including typeface choice and arrangement, as well as visual expression, would be applicable and workable to generative selfies. It shows possibilities to use own personality of each typeface to be expressive and visually appealing in generative art. The future research will involve more diverse typefaces aligning with the history and styles of typefaces. Also, the last one, it will be more collaborative with the visual elements to be visually eloquent, meaningful, and indicative. Yeah, so if you have uh, more, uh, if you would be interested in learning about this project, you would visit typeandcode.com, yohan.com, socialhomeness.com. That's all I have today. Thank you so much uh, for watching my presentation again. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe you could um, add those um, URLs. Oh, yeah, sorry. Mm. I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe you could uh, add those URLs at the end to the chat so we can all just um, pick them up. Thank you very much. Um, yes. I, are there any questions? Let me just check. That's a good idea that I can put the website address that you can visit the taibandcode.com to learn about this project more. Also, if you may have any uh, interest to collaborate with me, feel free to contact me that you can get my contact information from the website or this is my email address. Thank you, yeah. I was um, just gonna ask you, how, how do you decide which typefaces to use? And um... that's... <laughs> Yeah, that's an excellent question. I did uh, some research about the history of typefaces, what kind of typefaces identically through the history has been used. Baskerville, yes. And also one of the most popular sans serif typeface, Helvetica, also Times New Roman is very popular. Also Putra, Didot, that identically I chose some of the typefaces aligned with the history of typefaces. Mm -hmm. So I wondered if you were trying to express any emotion by the choice of typeface as well, um, you know, because that's part of the selfie and the emotion of, you know, what you're trying to express. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I just missed the beginning of your question. Oh, okay. I just wondered if you picked the typefaces to express some sort of emotion as well, whether there was an emotional aspect to your choice of typeface, so that they were expressing some sort of emotion in your in your pictures, in your art. Exactly. So if you see my typographic selfie plus code, particularly Times New Roman, this is an academic conference that if you see my selfie there, may I just share the, uh, my presenting slide? Yeah, here, yeah. So for instance, uh, I like my selfie with the time to new, new Roman. I'm gonna just go to here. It's, uh, okay, I have to go to here. Can you see? That yeah. use the time, uh, time to new Roman. That it's just so intellectual, academic feeling that you may see or feel through this selfie that, yeah, I like this idea that I'm suggesting new way of using typeface in generative art that using typography is predominantly in graphic design community, but I think uh, using typography could be embedded in generative art area or computational visualization area. Right, thank you very much. I think. Thank you. More yeah. questions? I don't think so. Maybe if Oliver is ready, are you ready, Oliver?